turn to the Lord who wants to prepare us for all that he wants to do. You know, this is an infinite act. This is Jesus Christ fixed in the act of love in which he died and saved the world. And we're called to enter into that, to praise him, pray for the world. So let him prepare us now for what he wants to do in and through us. That's a remarkable answer that our Lord gives, isn't it? We're enjoying ourselves. This isn't a time for fasting. There'll come a time for fasting. Which is very helpful. This is personal idea. When I was a little fellow in the monastery, my first year, all our food came to us right at the place where we sat. There was no looking around for food. There it was. Take it or leave it. There it is. It was good. There was nothing wrong with it. I decided to fast on bread and tea for a month to prepare for the feast of August 15th, uh, the Assumption. So, but I was shoveling sand all day. I mean, I was, you know, so I got pretty tired, but I was doing all right. And by the other, by telling the novice, he's, he's, fat, he's not eating anything. And he didn't say anything. He waited. And one day, so I was walking down the stairs. I slipped. I, I slipped. There was nothing wrong with me. I wasn't dizzy. He grabbed me and said, who gave you permission to do that? You're under obedience, aren't you? I said, yeah, I guess I am. He said, well, from now on, you're under obedience to eat every single thing that's put in front of you at your table. And that was the end of that. And it was good because... You know, I could have gotten preoccupied with my fasting instead of with the Lord. And that's what these texts are telling us. God is saying, so you go in your comfortable house with all your money, you give up cookies. And down the street there's a guy who can't even feed his family. Is this what I mean by a fast? You see how, as I said... Uh, in Lent there are three lessons, right? First, how do we live our Christian life? Second, what is the meaning of the passion? And third, what was going on in the heart of Jesus himself? Which comes when we have those certain psalms and those texts from Jeremiah. To, to know the, the psalms are a sacrament, right? They give us Jesus. He is the Word. And he prayed these psalms. And so like today we have this one. Today we have the psalm that complements this reading from Isaiah, which is marvelous. Here's God saying, is this a fast? Lie on the ground and look miserable? What gives you an idea that that's a fast? You know? This is the kind of fast I want. Release those bound unjustly. Untie the thongs of the yoke. Set free the oppressed. Break every yoke. Share your bread with the hungry. Shelter the oppressed and the homeless. Clothe the naked when you see them. And don't turn your back on your own family. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn. Now, he doesn't mean we break out the stake every day during Lent. you know, But he's saying there's more to it. And of course, in that, the fasting, almsgiving, and prayer, that are prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, uh, that we saw, in the, that's the basics of biblical religion, right? So the first is prayer, then fasting. And why do we fast? So we have stuff to give away. But we can fast from many things. Fast from television. What a healthy thing to do. Then we got time to pray. Extra time for prayer and Lent. Oh, I just don't have any time. I'll bet you do. I'll bet you 20 bucks I could find a good hour in your life. And you know I'd win. This is what this is telling us, you see. Um, it is such a beautiful text. Then he says, you see, do this. Take, you know, take care of people. Make sure your own family's okay. 
Make sure you're reconciled to your family. This is the kind of fast I want. And of course, you know, give up steak on Friday. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's deeper than that. You see what, this is what I mean, these texts teach us how to live. The most beautiful thing about this text. So you do all that, and then what happens? You call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help yourself, and he will say, Hineni. Here I am. I've talked to you about that phrase. It's so beautiful. When, like in um, Genesis, God calls Abraham to go sacrifice Isaac, right? And he says, uh, Abraham. Abraham says, Hineni. I'm at your service. I'm at your, behold me, literally. And one of the great old medieval commentators, Jewish commentators, said, it is the sign of a man of God that he says yes to God even before he knows what he wants. And what God was going to ask something pretty big of Abraham. Go kill your son. Hineni. So what does God say here? You do this, you call on me, and I'll say, Hineni. What would you like? I'm at your service. Can you imagine? Our God is more human than we are, if you know what I mean. He's very... Do this, and then you come to me, and I'll say, I'm at your service. God will say, I'm at your service. What a promise. What a way to start Lent, right? So there's nothing wrong with all our Lenten resolutions, but let's see whether we're doing this stuff. Do we pray to God? Are we taking care of our family? Are we worried about the poor? We're trying to find a way to gather up the penance that I had in my mind. Now, I don't. I only. I have a three-room apartment, so I don't have much to clean out. You know what I mean? So it's not a big penance for me. But to get from the top to your, house, to your house to the bottom, go through and find everything you don't need and get it down to Haiti. That's a penance for lots of ways. You've got to go through your house. You've got to collect all the stuff. You've got to make sure it's clean. You've got to get it somewhere. That's a penance. But it's better than giving up cookies. You see what I'm trying to say? Now, we're trying to find a way to facilitate that, find a, how we get it all down to the Catholic Relief Service or someplace. Uh, anybody got an idea? Anybody know how to do that? That would be great. Tell Ted. But this is such a beautiful text. Do you hear the vibrance of the text? It, it's God talking to us. And the best line... Every time I read that, you see, you do this, you take care of one another, then you come to me, and you call on my name, and I'll say, yes, sir, what can I do for you? Isn't that amazing? 